Good uh, afternoon, uh, and thank you for coming to this session about uh, Linux mirrors and how we are building those in Africa. My name is Isha Sukan. I am a systems architect in a Mauritian company. In a Mar Mauritian company, oh, sorry. Uh, wait. All right, yes. So where was I? Uh, I am a systems architect in a Mauritian company called La Sentinelle Limited. And uh, like I said, Mauritius, this is where I'm from. It's a small country with a very small population, 1.2 million people. Uh, it's barely 2,000 square kilometers. And I will tell you in just in a while why I'm telling you why I'm giving you this information. So if you compare it to Germany, Germany, I think uh, it's above a 85, 80 or 85 million uh, people, land area of 350,000. So where exactly is Mauritius in the world map? Here. You see the dot in the Indian Ocean? That's where Mauritius is. And if you want to see how we are connected to the rest of the world, where well, actually, we have three submarine cables that connect us to the rest of the world, whether it is Africa, uh, Asia, mm, Europe, or the Americas. Three submarine cables. That means we have a pretty decent internet connection. Most households have between uh, 20 to 30 megabits of connection, and local latency is about uh, five, between five to eight milliseconds. That's good. But the problem starts when we need to leave the island and to reach out to content that are far from us. For example, if we need to reach servers that are in the United States, the distance from uh, Mauritius to the west coast or the east coast of the United States about between 16 to 18,000 kilometers. And in terms of latency, we are speaking about 300 plus, 400 plus milliseconds. Now, Europe, like let's say central uh, Europe, is between 9,000 to 10,000 uh, kilometers away. Again, latency is 200 plus above. Then the closest to home is South Africa, about 3,000 kilometers. Latency about uh, 60 plus milliseconds, usually between 60 to 80 milliseconds. But that's a single point of failure for us. Because if for some reason uh, we cannot have our content, uh, we cannot have our traffic reach out to South Africa, we have to go to the rest of the world and again, higher latency. And the second problem is that in the whole African continent, until a few months ago, or I must say, to be precise, until a year ago, there were only two mirrors for OpenSUSE, whole African continent. And both of those mirrors were in the southern region, in South Africa and in Kenya. Uh, then I got the chance to speak to a few of our OpenSUSE members, uh, contributors, and I understood how to build mirrors. Thanks to, I'm a, I must say, big thank you to, to Richard, Lubosch, and Dirk, who actually gave the idea about build mirrors in Mauritius. So a year ago, we built the first mirror in Mauritius, and a few months later, we built one in South Africa. That makes a total of four mirrors in the whole of African continent. But again, still, it is concentrated towards the south, in the Indian Ocean and the south of, uh, of the continent. Now, I'll come back to you about solving the problem. I'm just going to give you a brief, uh, uh, a quick brief about the mirror infrastructure and how we built it. So, OpenSUSE mirror, uh, OpenSUSE uses uh, mirror cache for its uh, mirroring infrastructure. It is uh, a project by OpenSUSE itself, and uh, it is maintained by Andre Nikitin and Elise Rocha. I'm hoping to meet them here at the conference. 
Uh, Mirakash makes it such that uh, any person installing OpenSUSE doesn't have to configure anything, doesn't have to do any magic to be able to get content updates uh, from a server closer to home. For example, if I install OpenSUSE in Mauritius, I don't need to specify the Mauritian mirror or the South African mirror. Mirrorcache takes care of that. When the request goes to software.opensuse.org or download.opensuse.org, it is automatically the request is automatically redirected to the closest uh, server, which is registered with mirror cache. This I already spoke. Uh, so how do you set up a mirror? OK, you, now you know that. If you want to have faster updates, you need to set up one. So there's a page on the OpenSUSE wiki uh, about mirror infrastructure. infrastructure. And, uh, special attention to the section about async modules. Now, what is an async module? It is a dedicated, designated directory on the server uh, that specifies a set of files and folders that can be synchronized using async. So for example, how async works. If I need to synchronize uh, something from uh, uh, a server in a remote location, I need to specify the server and the actual path that I'm sensing. But with an async module, when I'm syn synchronizing something, I can specify directories, files that are on different locations. I, the person who is uh, synchronizing does not need to know. So me, as a, uh, as a mirror admin in Mauritius, I do not need to know the exact location of those files. I'm, for example, synchronizing to, uh, from a server in Germany using a module, and those files on different data centers, maybe with a shared, uh, how do you call that, storage, something. Don't need to know. The module is going to take care of that. Uh, a word of caution about that uh, wiki page. Uh, at the top of the wiki page, it says that if you want to set up a mirror, you need to at, to at least have uh, 40 GB to 60 GB of uh, space. Uh, this is kind of misleading, because uh, between 40 to 60 GB, you won't get that much of, of, of stuff for your mirror. And uh, what you actually need to do is to scroll further down that page, and there are two links that are specified. Uh, in the next slide, we will see that. Uh, it will give you an idea about how much space is needed for what kind of, for different kind of content that you need to mirror. Uh, second thing that you need to know if you want to set up a mirror is uh, bandwidth. The recommendation is uh, 10 megabit and a minimum of 10 me uh, megabit if you don't have 100. Uh, hardware or the operating system does not really matter. So you can have a mirror built for OpenSUSE, but you build the mirror itself, the mirror server, on a different Linux distribution. Uh, I'm going to specify Linux and not some other operating system. So yes, like I said, in that page, uh, there are two links that are specified for two different uh, async mirrors for OpenSUSE. And uh, from that list, it is, I think it is generated uh, on a daily basis. It tells you the amount of actual space occupied by those uh, modules, like I said. So if I want to mirror the full OpenSUSE module, that is Leap, all the different versions of Leap, the updates, etc., it is actually 4.9 terabytes, not those 40 or 60 uh, gigabytes that are mentioned in the wiki. And if I want to mirror uh, OpenSUSE Leap and Tumbleweed, then I need to choose, I think, uh, OpenSUSE full refactory, which is again about four terabytes. But as a mirror, do I need all that, uh, uh, how do you call that? All those number of packages? Probably not. So then it becomes a problem. And uh, especially if uh, you come from an area where you have been able to get a sponsor, to, to get you a virtual machine, some bandwidth, but not that amount of space. So that's what we did and how we handled it, and I'm going to explain how. So, but before that, 
there are three different mirrors, uh, not mirrors, but rsync servers from which you can synchronize your content. There is rsync.opensuse.org. Uh, it's publicly accessible. Anyone who wants to set up maybe a home mirror, if you have some pet projects running on Ubuntu and you want to have your own uh, updates about home, then rsync.opensuse.org. It's public, but it's slow. A lot of traffic, a lot of people trying to synchronize from that. Then the second one you have, uh, it's stage.opensuse.org. It's really fast. We are synchronizing from that one, but this one is accessible only to registered mirrors. So if you've built your mirror, you have building your mirror means you have set up your server, configured your, the web server and everything, configured the firewall, now you want to synchronize content from stage, then you need to contact our OpenSUSE heroes. In a later slide, I'm going to show you how you do that. Now, there is a third server called stage-main-repos.opensuse.org. This is a new one, uh, and uh, it is publicly accessible for now. I don't know in the future if it's going to remain like that, but it's very fast. Uh, the only difference is that it is uh, it synchronizes the same content, almost the same content as stage, but it has a five minutes delay. But if that's not a big problem for you, then it's okay. Also, tiny word of caution, if you want to synchronize uh, the ports uh, repository, uh, that is, you want to have different architect, uh, your mirror needs to support different architectures, uh, ARM64 and all the other architectures, then probably you need to check out whether this uh, uh, async server have everything that you need, because the ports repo is a bit, uh, uh, how do you call that? Does not have uh, everything. All right, I told you about the page, uh, the wiki page uh, here, about mirror infrastructure. There is a second wiki page, it's called the mirror how-to, that walks, through you, walks you through all the steps that you need to set up a mirror. That is, you've installed OpenSUSE on your machine, be it Leap, Leap Micro, or any other distribution that we've been discussing during the conference. Uh, you install that on your server. Now what you need to do next? You need to configure uh, a, a web, web server to, ser to serve all the files. You need to set up the firewall, etc. Uh, configure async if you want to, to set up a, a daemon, set up your cron jobs. Everything is specified in that page, all the technical details. And once you have done that, you have synchronized your files, then you go to the step that, about uh, registering your mirror. A few things about uh, the technical details, things that I encountered, and I think probably it needs some love if other people can contribute to this part and uh, provide suggestions how we do it better. So on the page, there is uh, this cron job specified of uh, how you can synchronize the things from uh, an async server in a very good way. It tells you to use uh, WebLock so that you don't have uh, a first async is not completed, but uh, uh, let's say after six hours, another async starts and tries to override things that are still being synchronizing. It becomes kind of dirty on the server. So you can use uh, WebLock for that. But the last time I've used WebLock, um, I ran into problems. All right, uh, so some love there. If some people can uh, maybe uh, suggest alternatives or check out problems with WeBlock, that would be great. So one problem that you might encounter if you did not read the wiki about uh, how much space is required by the different modules. For example, the wiki tells you here you can use uh, from the server, uh, async server, async.opensuse.org, you can use the module OpenSUSE hot stuff, hot stuff 160 gigabyte. You expect that the maximum amount of space that is going to be required here is 160 GB. So you say, okay, let's, let, me use, let me use a disk of about 500 GB. That's what I actually did. But within two days, it was filled completely, ran out of space. And then when you go back to that uh, thing, 
you see that uh, open user hot stuff 160 GB actually is 1.5 terabyte. It's not 160 GB. Well, the problem is when these modules were created initially, the, they were consuming probably 160 GB of, of space, but over time it grew and grew and grew. And uh, today, if you even if you want to, to use uh, the module hot, hot stuff 640 GB, it is actually 2.45 terabytes on the system. So there, you might run, run, uh, run into some problems. So the way I did things is I did re the reverse. I don't know if it is a good way, a bad way, a better way, or you can uh, tell me your suggestions uh, in a few minutes. So what I did was that I created several scripts and instead of using those modules and using dash dash exclude to say, okay, I don't want this, I don't want that, because I do not know actually what are in those directories unless I synchronize everything somewhere and understand it, I actually, um, after the first synchronization that failed over a 500 GB of disk, uh, I understood the directory, how it is organized, and I created several scripts to synchronize a specific directories to fill in one specific directory tree. For example, uh, here I have uh, a script that does uh, an rsync from stage. It is synchronizing from the OpenSUSE full module, but I'm not synchronizing the full module. I'm synchronizing only the lib 15.4 uh, directory. I'm putting it, synchronizing it to a specific folder directory path on my server. And uh, the only addition is I, I'm using dash dash stats so, so that after this synchronization is complete, I get an email about all the files that have been synchronized and files that have been removed from the server. The directory tree on the server, on the mirror uh, server, looks like this. I have distribution that has two directories, uh, lib and lib micro, each having the different versions of lib and lib micro uh, directories. Uh, the distribution directory also has two sim, sim links uh, that points to the current uh, lib version. I have the ports directory, I have the tumbleweed directory, and the update directory, and factory symlink that points to tumbleweed. This structure, I tried to understand it when I looked at other mirrors and figured out, okay, this is the things that are there. So I don't need the whole distribution leap and all the versions of leap. I need only these on the current mirror in Mauritius. And uh, a full synchronization of, of, of these directories actually ended up being 1.6 terabyte. So that's fine. We've been able to add additional storage and do it. Instead of having, uh, let's say, OpenSUSE full, which would have been uh, 4.9 terabytes, we've actually reduced that to 1.6. And we did not have to use dash dash excludes because then again we will need to understand which other directories that we need to exclude. Uh, so that's it. Once we've been able to have a server with everything synchronized, the next step is to register it. So that mirror cache knows that uh, you have a mirror, you have content on that mirror, and which other content that you are serving, because you're not serving the whole 4.5 terabytes of open to the full uh, module. You're serving only 1.6 of that. For Miracash to know that, you need to inform our uh, awesome fellows from open to the heroes. So you go on progress.opensuzy.org, you create a ticket, you explain to them, okay, I have a new mirror, maybe in Mauritius, South Africa, Kenya, or somewhere here in Germany and uh, provide some details about uh, uh, the, the IP address of the email, the sponsor name of that email, some URLs, if you, a bunch of stuff. All these are specified on, on the wiki page. It's just a simple template. You fill it out, you create your ticket, and uh, hopefully within 
the, probably the same day or within uh, the same week, someone will act on that uh, ticket and your mirror will be registered. The next thing you will know that when you do a zipper update, everything is being pulled from the nearest mirror now, if you have registered that one. So, like I said, a year ago, exactly a year ago, that is in May uh, 2022, we created the first open source mirror in Mauritius, registered it, getting false updates now, and from the experience that we got from uh, OpenSUSE, we've created mirrors for other uh, projects also. And one logo which is missing here is actually for KDE. We have also set up a mirror for, for KDE. I, uh, the guy who did that is, is here with me, Neil. Uh, so now we are thinking more than just Linux distributions. Instead of having those, we can also have mirrors for applications, KDE, VLC, and other open source uh, apps that are popular in Mauritius. We can start uh, putting mirrors for them. Project sponsors. So how do you get a sponsor for the project? Uh, all right, the first sponsor here is OpenSUSE. Because our mirror, we need a domain name. So mirror.opensuse.mu, MU for the Mauritian uh, CCTLD was sponsored by OpenSUSE itself, uh, OpenSUSE project. How do you do that? Just reach out to the board. They are good people there. Just talk to them. They will give you. And then I have uh, Cloud.mu. Uh, Cloud.mu provided uh, virtual machines uh, and uh, 10, sorry, not 10, 100 megabit of bandwidth things that we needed to, to have our mirrors. We have uh, a second sponsor, Data Keepers. So Cloud and, Cloud MU and Data Keepers are the server providers and bandwidth providers. One is providing in Mauritius, another one is providing in South Africa. Rogers Capitals and ISP also providing us some VMs for Leap 15.5 testing. So once you start doing things, it's pretty easy to get other sponsors because they see that, okay, this is a nice way to contribute to open source. Maybe just give a small VM that, that is great. For an ISP, giving a VM and some bandwidth, it's like peanuts. So, and for them, the, the branding about contributing to open source by just giving some bandwidth and uh, VMs is a great thing. So yeah, that's it. Uh, Thank you, Sean, after that. And uh, what I would love is to hear your comments, questions if you have, and uh, suggestions to improve this thing. And before I finish talking, again, right now we have only four mirrors in Africa and Indian Ocean. But Africa and Indian Ocean is not just four countries. It's many countries. So. We are trying to reach out to as many people, as many partners in the region who can provide servers in different uh, parts of Africa, maybe Northern Africa. Uh, the Eastern side can benefit from the uh, tumors that we have, but the Western side of Africa is completely zoned out. You want to update an open source machine there, probably then good luck. So now, comments, questions, suggestions, if you have. Yes. Me. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for the talk. I would like to tell you that yeah, you are not uh, the only one who is using uh, minus minus includes because uh, yeah, I administrate a mirror in Prague and we do the same. So we also have Tumbleweed fifteen three four and five and only Intel and ARM architecture, and it's also about 1.5 uh, terabytes of data. And yeah, I'm not sure, because I use minus minus exclude to exclude some older versions of Leap and some architectures, but I wonder, uh, because there is quite a lot of symlinks, for example, the Ports directory or the yes yeah how do you solve this or do you have your scripts somewhere for example on Git available? 
Uh, no, we do not. We have not shared anything on on, on Git so far. But uh, the uh, the first part of your question, where how did we solve it, was that instead of using the dash dash excludes or dash dash includes, the best way was to understand the directory tree and create different scripts with different all things and all things those specific. Uh, Directories on your own uh, server, in your your own directory path that you create. So that works for us. It's working now. I do, like like I said. I I don't know if it is this is the best solution uh, under the current situation where we have a growing uh, how do you call that infrastructure with with terabytes and terabytes of of open SUSE packages. So unless somebody comes with a better solution, I'm going to stick with this one. Yeah, I agree with you that we probably would need another rsync module with, yeah, basically we synchronize the same, so what you showed. Yes, let me just yeah. go back to the modules. See, there's a, a new module that was created uh, very recently, OpenSUSE Hot Stuff uh, Hack Week. And thank you, Lubosh, for doing that. I think uh, uh, Lubosh came to Mauritius. We had a nice talk about this, uh, uh, how do you call that, this mirroring problem. And uh, in, during Hack Week, he started working on that. So he tried to create a module to keep everything under one terabyte. But trust me, right now it is 800 gigabytes. And it's not going to take a lot of time for this to go above one terabyte. So using modules with certain names just, just to keep things uh, uh, in a low amount of space, probably, I speak, speaking for myself, it's not the right approach. So like I said, I'm sticking to, to the way uh, we are doing. And hopefully, I, I hope your dash dash includes, and with the dash dash excludes work uh, uh, for you. I, the, the new model from Lubosch from the Hack Week sounds actually cool. Maybe we can speak about it after. Yes. I, I would personally like to uh, get rid of this dash dash exclude because I think that this solution, even though it works for us, it's a bit ugly. Yeah. So thank you, Ish, for for nice talk. Um, I I wanted to ask you about how you approach these sponsors to get them um, to actually sponsor the mirror. What what is the the approach you used? What would you recommend to someone trying to do it in other countries? Uh, you're asking about the sponsors. Yes. Okay. You need to be an artist, man. You need to be an artist to be able to convince people to give you uh, money, to give you stuff for free, or how to convince a father to give you his daughter. So, similar, same approach. Try to impress the person in front of you. Uh, you go to a company, you want them to invest in an open source project, Tell them what they can get out of this, what, how it's going to benefit them. In my case, it was not that difficult with the first one, uh, because the person already wanted to, uh, how do you call that, uh, to be associated with something related to open source. So once it happened, then the rest, they are like competitors, you know, in the area of web hosting, ISPs. So when one will see the other is doing it, they will say, oh, I want to be associated with this as well. So that approach worked for me in Mauritius. I don't know about Germany or, or some other country in, in Europe, whether this is the approach that you would use, or it's a normal thing to just go uh, knock at the doors of the CEO of, a, of an ISP and say, hey, I need VMs for mirroring. <laughs> can't say about that. Any other comment? All right. 
we have one more. Thank you for the talk. Uh, just a question. So since you set up the mirrors, how much traffic have you got there? Or maybe you said it in the beginning and I missed it like I was... Oh, how much traffic? Uh, well, I didn't bring uh, data about the Mauritian one, but the Mauritian one, Mauritian one has pretty low traffic. Uh, I think uh, there are stats from Mirakash. Uh, probably need to check on the wiki if they provide uh, those stats. I know the Fedora project, uh, if you submit your, uh, like we did the different, uh, the mirrors for the different projects. So the one that I remember is Fedora has a page that tells you the amount of traffic they are getting from the different countries. They already do that. Whether you have or you don't have a mirror there. So it was a bit easy for me to estimate, okay, if we're going to have a Fedora mirror in Mauritius, this is the amount of traffic we're expecting. So if OpenSUSE doesn't have something similar, uh, then it would be a cool project to, to start here. Uh, the one thing uh, I think a few weeks ago, maybe two, two months ago, Doug posted, uh, wrote a blog post about uh, the number of downloads that increased. So I saw some, some Grafana uh, stuff there, some screenshots. So probably, yes, there is a place where we have that information about open source the downloads. Yep. Doug may be the right person to approach and get the information. Last comment, question, suggestion, room for improvement? If not, then that's cool. Finished at uh, 5 p.m. Thank you very much.